the team that designed the pyramid at the Louvre. And they created a design called Destination St. Pete. That was a way of bringing us together, by the way, because it would keep the historic design that many people wanted and it would provide something new and cool that, that, that other people wanted, right? And the combination of the two was terrific. So we had a vote, and the people voted for that. And the, and the mayor set up the process for the vote. The people voted, and they voted for that design. And then the mayor picked, ignored that, and picked a design that was, was, was not in first place, and people said at the time couldn't be done for the price and couldn't be done the way it was being proposed, right? That's what they said. So when the mayor was asked, well, didn't you promise the people to vote? He said, well, they voted. He said, he said they voted. He said, I, he, he, said, he said, I took it into consideration. <laughs> what does that mean? Take it into consideration when you ignore the vote, right? And so, the, so where we are now is obvious. We have a pier that turned out couldn't be built the way it was. It couldn't be done for the cost of this. So we have a, a watered-down design that is anything by, but I, I don't think anybody We'll call that an iconic design for our peers. Is, 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 is it something that's going, we're going to be proud about? No, I, I just can't imagine. So, 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 and it's it's tens of millions over budget, right? And by the way, the peer that was a success. The sewer system. We have a growing city. These council members and I, when I was in office, recognized that. In, in, in 2001, when I took office, we were under a DEP order consent order to fix our sewer system. During the following nine years, we spent $160 million on water and sewer capital improvements in our city. At the end of that period, we were in 2010 off the DEP consent order and we were named the best maintained big city sewer system in the state in 2010. So, so what do we do? What do we do? Well, we have a plan to improve one of our plants to be able to take sewage from our downtown plant and transfer all the sewage. But the mayor decides, well, I'm not going to wait for this other plant to be ready for anything. I'm going to close it down anyways. We closed down a plant. We had gone 16 or 17 years without a major spill in our city. We closed down a plant, and four months later, we dumped 50 million gallons of sewage into the plant. Now, that's a pretty big mistake, right? But the mistake got worse, because after it happened, the response from the city hall was that, well, this really has nothing to do with closing that plant. This was all because nobody ever maintained the system in the past. Nobody ever spent any money to fix our sewer system, which I think, as I just said, is completely untrue. And the, 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 instead of putting the plant back on, they doubled down. They dismantled the plant. Of course, they, they wanted to build a tilapia farm, so I can understand. So, so, so they, they, they then moved forward, closing down the plant. A year later, we dump another 100, 150 million gallons. You know, it's really hard to be a green city when you're dumping 200 million gallons. So, things have not gone well. And, and you know, I, I, I have to tell you, I have no intention of coming back to this job again. I really do. I, I uh, but I love this city. And I just can't stand it. I just can't stand by and watch because you know I, I have studied cities for 30 years. I'm a, I'm a fellow at the Manhattan Institute, so I've got an opportunity to see what's going on in the cities. And I understand what happened to some of the great cities in the Northeast and the West. And I understand that when a city's on the rise, it can turn into decline, and you can sometimes wonder how did it happen. Well, I can tell you how it happens. It happens by putting people who are not competent in positions to run the government, right. and, it, and it happens while you spend more and more and more and more money, and you start taking that money from the taxpayer. Foolish, and and, and 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 the renaissance is not guaranteed to continue. So I have decided, with my friends around me, to announce that I am running to be the next mayor. Of
got to be quick because I'm probably 20 minutes over by now. I, I, I got to tell you, um, I, I, I thought I should talk a little bit about where we've been, but I'm not running about that. You know, you know, you're going to hear a lot of backward-forward ads on my opponent going forward, right? This guy's backward, we're forward. Let's not go backward, we're going forward. Let me tell you what backward is. Backward is dumping 200 million gallons in the building and, and turning around our environment. You know, that, 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 that it, 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 it kills the health of our day, right? It, it, it severely impacts our, our economy because people start to wonder about the reputation of St. Pete, and it impacts our quality. That's going backward. Going backward is a hole in the water where our pier used to be. That is going backward. Going backward is spending money like it's water. That is going backward. We are going forward. And I intend to bring our city in a new forward direction because I recognize that this is not the same city I took over in 2001. I understand that. I get that. Anybody don't understand that? And if you've been watching me, I've been involved a little bit. You know, working in Sundial and, and working with the Rowdies because I think that's going to be a great new opportunity for our city. Yeah. Going forward. So I haven't been, you know, I haven't been nestling in my office, kind of relaxing and, and wondering what I do next. I've been out working for the city as we go forward. So I understand exactly where our city is. I worked with the folks in the Warehouse Art District to start that Warehouse Art District after I left office because I understand how important that is and I want to continue to work to go forward. So what am I going to do? Well, I'll tell you, in schools, I'm going to be back, okay? I'm going to be yeah. back in our schools. Yeah. Yeah. My, my daughter, Julianne, asked me to remind you that, that I went to every school in our city. I shook hands with every child in our city because I think it's important for the children in our city to know who their mayor is. Because I think they feel proud about their city. I think they feel differently about their responsibility within the city if they know their mayor. And I have kids, I hate to say it, the sixth graders, I was shaking hands with about 25 now, 24. And, 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 and I had them stop me. I, and I have to tell you, I, I had one stop me recently. He said, he said uh, Mayor, do you recognize me? <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> Remind me where, right? <laughs> I just gave my secret up, George. So, so I, I, said, and I said, yeah, I do. Remind me where. He said, oh, you remember? He, he had his sunglasses on. We were at Sundown. I said, I said well, I do. I, but help me with this. He said, he said, look, look. He took his glasses off. So he help, right? And he said, I'm the little kid at the parade. <laughs> and I believe the mayor's coat is something you put on and you take off. When you put it on, you should treat it well. Right? You treat it with respect, but you should also bring it to people throughout our city. You should walk the parades and shake the hands. And you should go through the schools and shake the hands and talk to the kids and talk to the teachers. You should be out in your community all the time because the mayor's code is a precious thing. And someday you're going to take it off and give it to somebody else, and hopefully they'll do it the same way, right? So I believe you get in the schools, and I intend to be back this week. Now, our schools have turned out. There's no, it's not a big secret, right? Our schools have having some problems lately, right? I don't blame that on Mayor Preston. I want you to know that. There are a lot of things that have impacted to make those schools go the way they are. What I do disagree with is where's the passion for the mayor, right? Where's the involvement from the mayor? Where's the plan from the mayor? Where is the, the, the all-in response from the mayor? I promise you, I will give it. I will go into the schools. I will work with the school system. I will work with the school board. And I will be in our schools because I'm going to tell you, we, we, we have to have great schools. We cannot accept the fact that the schools in our city are not where we want them to be. We can have great schools, and we will have great schools if you'll let me help. If you'll let me help. So in, in, I'm, 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 in yeah, Leslie just said I talk as long as Wendy Newton. You know? <laughs> I think I'm going to pass that. Right? <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, I, I believe we can continue the great effort we've had downtown. I think we need to put a plan together to get more uh, business downtown, to get some, some more office space downtown, some more employers in our downtown. I think there's ways to do that. I want to I want to help to do that. I also want to fix our permanent park, right? Everybody I talk to around the city, I've been going around to 50. I just, by the way, I just went around to 50 different neighborhood associations, civic groups in the city because I was talking about the Rowdies. And, and, and that had a big impact on my decision to do this because I heard about the issues in our community. One of them is permanent department. And, and it, 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 it's, it's been called, uh, well, non-functional. We, we just have to make it smooth. Not, not because we should be good guys or something. It's because if you 
make it a good process. People will invest their money in our city, and then we'll have jobs, and the people all over our city will be able to be, be part of that jobs. We have to work with the business community, continue downtown. We have to continue this emphasis that we put on arts. I really think it's our anchor in our downtown right now. We have to work to continue to build the, the downtown and make it a great place. We have to continue to work on our infrastructure. Of course, the first thing I have to do is fix it, right? The first thing we have to do is fix some of the some of the self-inflicted wounds that we've done in the last few years. But we can do that. We can do that. We will put it together and we will get it right in. But then we need to turn our focus on to the future with our schools, with our neighborhoods. We have to go back to the neighborhood and have the system, back to the neighborhood programs, with our downtown, with our economic development. And we have to we have to work in Midtown. We have, the people in Midtown need to know. That that uh, that we feel, about. and we need to, the mayor needs to be personally involved, and I will be personally involved. Because at the end of the day, I believe in building a seamless city. A seamless city is a place where, when you walk from one part of the town to another, you never cross a city, whether it's a railroad track, or a road, or a neighborhood boundary, and enter a place where you don't want to be. A place with broken windows, boarded up buildings. A place where children are afraid to come out and play their phone. If, if I don't want my children growing up in a part of the city, then those children should have to grow up in a part of the city. We should be a seamless city. But seamless cities mean something beyond that as well. It means we're all in it together. No matter who you are, whether you're black or white or whatever your nationality is, or gender, wherever you are in our community, you should be part of the seamless city. And, and part of that is the LGBT community. A lot has been said about me in the LGBT community by my opponent and my others. And, and, and I, I want you to know that I believe that the LGBT community is a vital and important part of our community. I believe that, that when, when we work together, we have to work together with everyone. I don't want to govern with 90% of the city. I want to govern with 100% of the city behind me. When I was in office, by the way, I, I, that's the way I did it. If you were to look at my administration, we had people from the LGBT community at every level of my government through the cabinet level. And, and it's not, and I, and I, I, I hate to talk about groups like that, because, but I have to because I'm, I'm being called this. And, and, and so I, I want you to know, when I look at folks, whoever they are, I'm looking at what they can contribute to what we are doing not who they are or what they are. So there we go. The race is on. And I, I, want, I want, the race is on. I think they're not because they want me to leave. The race is on. And I am. The race is on. The, the, uh, uh, I, I'm going to bet that Rick Crichton is going to disagree with one or two things I just said. So I want to give him the opportunity to to respond to that, right? And, and, and I, want, I want to give the opportunity to talk in the neighborhoods of our city as we go over the course of the next three months. I am absolutely willing to defend anything I ever said or did, and I am equally absolutely willing to make sure Rick Reisman defends everything he does as well. I hope everyone watching will be with us as we go forward because this is absolutely for everybody to be involved. I want to invite everybody in our community. I want to thank all of you for being here. God bless you. And God bless you. Yeah.